<laughs> I can share my laptop with them. <laughs> I'm on. I'm also having technical difficulty. My my internet just went down in my office, so I'm on my phone. I know the feeling. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Three minutes before the meeting. Yeah, yeah. I'm just checking my mic. Can you guys hear me? I, I realized it was off. Yeah. <laughs> yes. What did you say? Vic, I couldn't hear you say, sorry, Vic, he's having issues with the city of Troy. Uh, well, I think he has issues, but anyway, that's another story. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, they've done a lot of uh, seating on the street there in front of some of the establishments, which is good because at least it gives more room. Well, yeah, you are, but uh, before they before they were at least spreading it out into the parking spaces. You know, it was so crowded, you couldn't get through there at all. And I don't know about his side of the street. I don't go over there. But, yeah. I'm usually only at the whistling kettle there, so. Yeah. Sure, sure. I, um, I, no, that's okay. I just, uh, what, what do you want me to do about his board ops committee? I don't have his notes. Yeah, okay, okay. All right. All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and. Thank you for attending the uh, CDTA board meeting. I'd like to call the uh, meeting to order. Uh, we have a quorum. I appreciate everyone's uh, attendance. Um, 
The uh, agenda has been uh, distributed and looks good. So at this time, I seek a motion to approve our agenda. This is Dave, I'll move that. Thank you, Dave. This is Denise, I'll second. All right, Denise, thank you. Uh, in addition, the uh, minutes of our last meeting on May 27th were distributed and um, they look good. Um, but at this time, I seek a motion for approval of the minutes. So moved, this is Georgie. Okay. Thanks, Georgie. And was that Jackie for a second? Yeah. Okay, okay. hi, Jackie. Um, as we know, our recognition um, um, have been postponed until we can get together and do those in person. So at this time, uh, we'll move along to the committee reports and the first one being the board ops committee, which met on June 10th. Yeah, Mike, can we pass on that? Vanessa just went to fetch up and hang on, here she comes. Oh, all right. I'll, I'll give the report while the chairman uh, recovers from a, a bad morning with technology. Um, uh, um, the committee met on the 10th of June uh, via Microsoft Teams. Um, ha had a very good meeting. Talked about a lot of things. We reviewed the agendas for the month of June. Uh, and the committees have all met. And, and uh, I think did a great job with the, uh, with the agenda items. Uh, Especially noteworthy in performance monitoring, uh, you know, a long list, uh, pretty normal for this month, but a long list of things to get through. Um, we got a report on the strategic planning process. Uh, this will actually save me from making the report as part, part of my CEO report. But the, the leadership team, uh, of which numbers about a dozen or 14 staff people, has been working. Um, continuously over the last couple of months uh, on the strategic plan. Uh, as the board will recall, the, their, your last touch point was with the strategic pillars. And in fact, the board added a pillar of community, which I think was very appropriate. And the staff has sent the team, the staff team has since been developing a set of goals that sit under each pillar that I think will, will bring them to life a bit. And, and, and help to help people to understand what they mean uh, in more detail. And we will um, have a meeting next week, uh, the board members and the leadership team, where the, the team will go through those. The board at our last meeting with Barbara said, everything's good, but, but we don't know the story. We don't know how you got from where we left off to where you are. We're missing sort of a narrative um, so we're going to do that. Unfortunately, it's, it's going to be uh, on team, so it does create, it's tougher to kind of go back and forth, uh, but we'll give it the, the old college try. Uh, Barbara has got everybody prepared. They're all doing their homework, and, and let's, let's give a shot, and we'll, we'll hope for the best. Uh, but it's, it's a lot of good work, and I think, I think you'll be impressed. A packet of information will be emailed to you um, tomorrow or Friday at the latest, uh, so you have some time to look it over. Feel free, in the interim, if you to see it, if you have questions, uh, Barbara, uh, me, or anybody on the staff. Uh, Lisa Morello provided the legislative update. No real new, new news. Um, you know, um, we're still kind of in limbo with SOA, and she reported on a couple of touch points and dates at which we might see some activity. As I recall, the, the date that she pointed out as sort of the next one to keep an eye on is June 30th, some legislative uh, action. But we don't have any sign of, of that being either released or partially released anytime soon. And we're, we're no different than a lot of organizations, a lot of not-for-profits, a lot of people who are dependent on uh, state funding. But it does add to our uh, cash flow issues. Um, I'll talk about COVID in, in my report, sort of bring everybody up to speed on, on everything. Um, but we did talk extensively in the committee about COVID. Uh, the next meeting of the Board Operations Committee is Wednesday, July 15th, 9-15. Uh, either Microsoft Teams or 
Uh, anyone who wants to come to 110, uh, you may be you're invited to do so. Um, we can accommodate up to 10 people in the boardroom. So all we would need to know in advance is how many members will be attending, and then we would make the appropriate adjustments um, uh, on the staff side. We would still use teams for anyone who can't make it, or staff who can't, can't be in the room who we might need uh, to participate in that. That concludes my report, Mr. Cushon. On behalf of Mr. Lahat. All right, Farm. Thank you for that. Any questions for Farm regarding the report? Or no, just wondering why we keep seeing the back of your head every once in a while. I just <laughs> keep switching. switching. <laughs> the I, think Car I, think, I think Chris is trying to show off my best qualities. <laughs> <laughs> it's certainly not the front. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thanks again, Carl, for that. Thanks, and um, next up, we uh, we have the performance monitoring audit committee, and Denise is going to provide that to us. Denise. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Um, the committee had uh, we had several items uh, that we have before you today for approval. Uh, the first one being approval of contract for the Bokeland uh, building demo. Uh, we have discussed the need for additional facil uh, facility storage uh, because of upcoming service expansions. And we recently purchased the Bolton uh, property uh, to provide employee parking to accommodate the Albany garage expansion. Um, we've received seven bids for building demolition and con construction of a new parking area. Uh, Newcastle Paving uh, provided the lowest bid. Staff recommends a contract to Newcastle Paving of Troy for an amount of $411,201 with a 20% contingency of $82,240. Um, so we need a motion to award a contract to Newcastle Paving of Troy for an amount not to exceed $493,441. This is Dave, I move that resolution. All right, thank you, Dave. We have a second? I, I can second. All right, Denise. Thank you for seconding that. Um, all those in favor of approving, approving the contract for Brooklyn building demolition, say aye. 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 All right, is that Mark? Yes, Mark. Yes, thanks, Mark. Uh, thanks, everyone. Um, well, there was a, anyone opposed? I think we had everyone say aye. Okay, so the motion is approved. Next, Denise. Okay, the next item is approval of the safety management system plan. Uh, the FTA requires all transit agencies to adopt a board approved safety management system plan. Uh, other, otherwise known as an organizational safety plan. This plan builds on our New York State approved safety plan that has been in place for many years. Uh, the SMS plan is a data-driven approach to mitigate risk. Uh, it establishes responsibilities, identifies risks, ensures plan implementation, and promotes safety information. As we begin the implementation phase, the board will be provided periodic information and updates leading to an annual board approval. Uh, the plan was included in your packet and we discussed it uh, the, at the committee meeting uh, with a full presentation uh, by Lance. Uh, I think it was Lance who did that one. Um, uh, anyway, uh, we need a motion to approve the implementation of the safety management system plan as required by the Federal uh, Transit Administration. This is Georgie. Um, Thanks, Georgie. I'll uh, second that. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Just, just a uh, note. Oh, sorry, just, Mike. Just a note on that, and, and Mike may yeah. want to jump in. Um, you know, I, I think the obvious question. There were some questions raised by members during the, the, the committee meeting. You know, what's different? You, you 
you know, we keep we talk at length about this data driven approach and all that. Um, but we want to we want to make sure here is that we take advantage of what I think is being presented to us, and that you know we have all kinds of safety reports that we make through the year and annually, but that we we really do uh, embrace the data driven aspect of the plan and merge it with other reports so that we're providing useful information to the members that they can use when they have to do the annual approval to, to, to rest assured that we are measuring what we're being asked to measure. We are uh, making adjustments based on what that information is telling us about, for example, bus operators with less than five years experience or uh, having you know, rear end accidents at a, a rate that's different than other operators, or whatever the data driven up is. Um, so I, I see this as an opportunity for us as an organization to take advantage of, not to just say, rubber stamp, we did what the FDA wanted us to do. I think that would be a mistake. <clears throat> so just, just a, 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 an editorial note, I guess. Thanks, Tom. All right. Finding all those uh, in favor of the resolution, um, resolution 2620 for the approval of the safety management plan is approved. Next, Denise. Yes, uh, the next was approval of the drug and alcohol policy, uh, changes to the drug and alcohol policy. The annual review of the drug and alcohol policy is required by uh, federal regulations and our own company standards. There was only one non-regulatory procedural change made to the policy uh, document. The revised policy was also included in the packet for everyone, and we had a, a discussion about what that uh, minor change uh, was. Um, and at this point, we needed a, a motion to approve the revised drug and alcohol policy. So at this time, we was that Jackie? Thank you. Yeah, sorry. We, that's okay. We second. Have a second. Thanks, Denise. All of those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, seeing no opposed, uh, resolution number 2720 approving the change to the drug and alcohol policy is approved. Okay. Uh, yes. And next up, we yes. have <laughs> an East Ridge Investment Committee. Yes, uh, the audit committee did not have any items. The investment committee met this morning and a report will be going out to the board um, probably by the end of the week or next week. Um, uh, the, uh, we had uh, also administrative discussion items uh, and the first one was an accident review uh, annual report. Rich Cordero uh, gave that annual report on bus accidents. Uh, there were 572 accidents this year which is an increase of 6% from last year. Uh, the accident rate was 5.5% uh, 5.5 per 100,000 miles. Sorry about that. There were 20%, there was a 20% increase in preventable accidents. About half were due to construction at the Troy garage. Um, looking forward to fiscal year 2021, Rich talked about training for supervisors and identifying aggressive driving habits. Uh, new refresher programs and rolling out our new SMS plan. And the goal is to reduce accidents by 5% next year. Uh, I don't know if anybody has any questions on that part of the report. On the accident review. Mm -hmm. I think it was also mentioned, wasn't it, um, that there were We've had a lot of um, a lot of drivers that are only on for like five years, and so um, we don't know. I don't know whether we know how much that's related to it, but uh, but a lot of a lot of turnover in drivers. Yeah, there's two two issues I think that are driving it. One, the we've been at this level now for a couple of years. In fact, 50 percent of the operators have less than five years experience. So so just sort of that rolling nature. Is, is the issue not that you know they're not being well trained or that they're they're not good people? It's just this rolling nature uh, of the workforce that is relatively new to us. 
And then lastly, just a little, maybe a little information on the Troy Garage and what, what, what really is happening there. I think you know we're expanding it um, to accommodate more vehicles. At the same time, right now, actually, we are uh, modifying the maintenance work area to be a little bit more efficient. That building really hasn't ha had that kind of work done to it since it opened. Uh, it was opened in 1980. Um, one of the few things that uh, predate me. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But um, what happened early on in the construction, um, bus operators had to navigate vehicles through a working a construction zone. Um, frankly, the fixes we made after the fact, we probably should have made the fixes before the fact. However, um, you know what what is safe operation is safe operation, and a preventable is doing something that you should have been not you should not have been doing. I would I would label it careless. Not none of the accidents were all that major, but it took us a little time to correct it. Uh, and and since we we've seen the the accidents in that regard diminish. Just an example of sometimes how things can get away from you. A very short period of time, you know, about a month's yeah. worth of time. Thanks, Carm. Um, okay, so moving along, then um, after that, we also had the yeah. workplace safety annual yeah, I, report. Yeah, I, I, I just have a question on that. Oh, sorry, Mark. Sure, Mark. Yeah, yeah. I was looking at the accident report, and uh, I noticed the absence of any indication of the severity of accidents. I, I, I think I would like to see future reports indicating uh, accidents resulting in hospitalization, if any. Well, Mark, uh, we could uh, look at that. Um, most of our preventable accidents are not serious enough where we have employees going to the hospital. Uh, it does happen on occasion, yeah. but we can certainly take a look at that going forward. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's why I said, if any, I, I didn't think there were many uh, serious accidents. I know uh, transit is much, much safer than uh, you know, individual automobiles. Yeah. But I would just like to see those statistics. They might actually help in terms of making that point to the public. Sure, and, and just to uh, review the preventable accident definition um, or, or what it includes, many of our preventable accidents are very minor to the point where there, a lot of them are mirror to mirror hits uh, or the, the mirror hits a garage door or a tree branch or something along those lines. That's the majority yeah. of our preventable accidents, but you know, we'll work towards getting a, modifying that report a little bit so we can identify those serious accidents for you. Great. Okay. Before I move on, are there any other questions? No. Nope. Nope. Okay. Um, so next we have the workplace uh, safety annual report. Um, Jack Roby, Roby gave that annual workplace safety report. Um, after several years of decreasing accidents, we saw an increase of 16 workplace accidents. Um, there were 81 workplace accidents. Um, major cost driver of our program is the maximum weekly benefit, and the weekly benefit is currently $934 per week. Uh, luckily, scheduled loss of use awards decreased by $321,000 over the past years, uh, the, the past two years, uh, due to changes in state legislation. We're talking about the work, workers' comp, uh, sorry. Um, recommendations include intensifying claims management and more work in departments to correct environmental factors that may cause unsafe areas. Any questions on the workplace safety annual report? No. No. Okay. Uh, and then uh, next we have the uh, monthly management report. Mike Collins gave that report. Uh, the impact of COVID-19 continues to have a major impact on our budget. Uh, most revenue categories remain under budget, with the exception of MRT, which was over budget by 12%. Although we report operating assistance according to budgeted accruals, 
the state has not made its STOA payment and has not indicated when they plan to uh, to do so, as I'm already indicated. Um, uh, revenue looks healthy. Uh, we're 99% above budget um, because we are reporting state assistance based on the New York State budget, but not because we've received it. <laughs> we are also including CARES Act funding uh, as part of the operating assistance. Expenses are down by 14%, and everybody uh, should have received a revised uh, monthly management report with their uh, meeting materials or after the meeting materials were sent out. Um, any questions on the monthly finish report for me or for Mike, more importantly? <laughs> hey, Denise, it's Dave. I, I just want to emphasize a point you already made, and that, that really is that we're accruing revenue based on what approved budgets are, federal and state budgets, but we're not receiving that revenue. So two months into our year, we're carrying a $10 million receivable in federal and state obligations. And... From a cash flow standpoint, without the CARES Act, you know, we'd really be hurting right now. Yep. So our financial statements almost look brighter than they are, but from a cash flow standpoint, um, it, it could become an issue down the road if, if we don't uh, start to get, either when the CARES Act revenue runs out or if we don't start to get federal and state money collected in the meantime. So it's, uh, it looks brighter than it really is. Right. Well, we chose we chose to make it look to, to, to show what we should be receiving. Yes. So yes, we did. Accurate. And just yeah. this is Carl, Just one addition to what they they rattled off a couple of actually more than a couple of things. Um, let's not forget um, customer fare revenue. You know, we yes. built that we built that up with the help of universal access agreements uh, to a point where you know it, it, it's twenty five percent or so. And you know, we haven't collected a fare since April 6th. Now, we'll talk a little bit later in the meeting about you know, a plan to start to move forward, but that won't all come back at once. It's going to take some time. Um, so you know, that's going to lag as well. So you have really your three major revenue sources either not happening right now, delayed, or, or, or dramatically reduced. So, you're all correct, and we just hope that that intersecting point that we're worrying about doesn't happen. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks. If there are no, I, no other questions on the financial? Uh, one, one other comment. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the CARES money is going to run out at some point. There is a successor relief bill. Uh, the HEROES Act which passed the House and is sitting in the Senate, which is not showing an inclination to move fast with it. But I think most analysts believe that because there are uh, about equal numbers of Republican and Democratic governors, some uh, relief bill passed the Senate, and uh, the House and Senate will then negotiate a compromise. But we don't know the specifics or the timing. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. Dave can, can echo this. Uh, the last the top update we received, this is only a word of caution, um, the distribution, you know, right along the line here in the details of that bill, the distribution of transit assistance was not going to be the same distribution mechanism as we experienced. Right now, they use the 53, the CARES Act 1, let's call it, use 5307 formulatic distribution. Uh, everyone, you know, just plug you into the formula. That's beneficial to us. Uh, the next thing, you know, of Bill 2 uh, was a little less clear, uh, a little more capital driven, a little more big system driven, uh, a little bit more, you know, at the discretion of the FTA. All that's good. We've done well in all those, I'll say basis, done well in most of those areas, but it, it was not formula, which, you know, frankly, you know what you're going to get. You can backtrack into it. Uh, so my caution there is I, I don't think you'll, we, we can expect to receive the same amount uh, in, in number two, even if the distribution to transit were the same. Right. Do you agree with that, Dave, based on what you were, were hearing? Yes, Carr. 
Very well stated. Thank you. Okay. Um, so with no other questions on the financials, uh, we also had a monthly non-financial report. Uh, Chris Desney provided that report to the committee. And uh, again, COVID-19 continues to have a significant impact on ridership. Um, the total ridership is down 58% for the fiscal year, which of course just began in April. Um, STAR is down 64% for the year. Uh, and on time performance for fixed routes is at 75%, while star on time performance was at 94%. Uh, I don't know if anybody has any questions uh, for Chris on the non financial report. I'm sure we'll be talking more with Parm's report about yep. ramping things up again. So mm -hmm. things aren't all gloomy. Huh? Things are not all gloomy. Right, right. It's, it's partly sunny. So with that, uh, with that, um, our next committee meeting is August 19th, at, uh, possibly <laughs> on Teams or um, in person. Not sure. Um, but uh, that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Denise, thank you. Thank you for the detailed uh, report. Sir, sorry. And, everyone's comments as well no that was great that was great um so next up uh next committee is the community and stakeholder relations committee and jackie will present that jackie thank you very much the yes. community and stakeholder relations committee met on june 18th at 11:30 a.m via microsoft teams uh, the staff provided presentations and updates surrounding covid 19 efforts um, John Scherzer and Jamie Watson presented an update on the 50th anniversary activities. New shelter posters, billboards, and a new commercial are part of the celebration and recognition of the 50th anniversary. Jamie Watson and Allison Schreffler outlined plans for a 50 Community Heroes contest that will run leading up to the 50th anniversary on August 1st. The contest will award 25 CDTA employees and 25 community heroes that have gone above the call of duty during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. Nominations will be solicited from CDTA employees and the community. Jamie Watson also summarized the monthly community engagement report. There were 20 media stories on television, in newspaper and online. Stories were related to our efforts in response to COVID-19, the United Way 518 Day, and protests happening in cities across the capital region. Jamie also discussed the updated communications to keep employees, customers, and the public informed about CDTA efforts surrounding COVID-19. Over the next few weeks, there will be updated messaging, corporate videos, commercials, and social media content to keep the public updated on CDTA services and its commitment to the community. The next meeting of the committee will be held on Thursday, August 20th, 2020 at 11.30 a.m., um, possibly via Teams or in person. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> right. That, can, that yeah. concludes my report. <laughs> All right. Jackie, thank you for that. Are there any questions or comments for Jackie or staff? No? Seeing none. Um, We'll move on to the Strategic and Operational Planning Committee, which met on June 18th, 12 p.m. Uh, via Microsoft Teams. We had no consent agenda items and two administrative discussion items. The first being July 2020 service changes. Ross Farrell gave a presentation and facilitated discussion on the July 2020 service changes. As we have been discussing over the last several months, the initial stages of the pandemic caused ridership to decrease by 67% to about 20,000 riders per day. We have since experienced gains that have brought us back to about 30,000 riders per day. Star ridership was likewise down 67% and those numbers uh, and those customers are also gradually returning. The goal of the changes we are rolling out on July 12th include investing in higher frequency and span on our busiest corridors, avoiding loads of 15 to 20 passengers whenever possible, 
and fast forwarding some of the TDP concepts we were previously planning on implementing. As the region starts to reopen, the plan is to accommodate up to 40,000 daily riders using only existing resources. Most trunk routes will be at or above prior levels. Several routes will have reallocated service, change of frequency span or short turning. Several other routes will remain at reduced schedules or not in operation. Details were given in the, during that presentation. There are many unknowns to which we must pay attention in the coming weeks, weeks, such as what is happening with schools and universities, state worker transportation, and the reintroduction of fares. Our second item of uh, discussion were barrier and other operator considerations. In the, in the latest in a series of updates, Lance Sarcone gave a presentation and facilitated discussion on some of the precautions we are taking to protect our employees and customers. We have implemented several measures in the garage, shop, and operator areas, including making available plenty of PPE, upgrading cleaning schedules, and stocking maintenance vending machines. We implemented rear door entry and exit at the beginning of April while maintaining 15 to 20 passengers per bus. We could do this using a series of incremental service updates made over the past few months and inserting stub buses where necessary. The subject of driver barriers is an important topic nationwide. We have been reviewing best practices at the state and national level, communicating with our peers, consulting with vendors, and evaluating our own in-house capabilities. There are several different bus configurations we operate, so this makes developing a standard design difficult. We hope to have barrier installations well underway by August and would like to see some progress on this before we introduce fare collection at the front door. We also discussed the need to move as many people to Navigator as possible, which requires addressing unbanked customers. Several strategies were considered, such as more partnerships with retail outlets and work with social service agencies in new and creative ways. Once again, and as I stated there in the committee meeting, I would like to commend the staff and employees for analyzing the, the data and being proactive with implementing these changes to make sure we are providing our customers the service they expect more importantly, providing a safe environment for our passengers, drivers, and all employees. So my hats off to everyone with, uh, with those changes we implemented. Um, we had no executive session items. Um, and our next scheduled meeting is August 20th at 12 p.m., either in person or via Microsoft uh, Teams. So that concludes my report, unless anybody has any questions or comments. Seeing none. Um, next up, we have- Yeah, Carl, so, sorry, uh, I, I was muted. I do oh, have a question and a comment. Yes, uh, yes, Mark. The, the question is, it appears from the uh, report that the number 13 will have reduced service but will continue on the same route and will not be shortened as previously proposed in July. Is that correct? Yes, Mark. We've kind of sort of put the plan aside for now uh, until we can get back to, to normal operations on the 13th because that whole plan depended on uh, you know, increased frequency to make the neighborhood route that will be introduced successful. So I think the timing is a little off, so we just delayed that a bit. We'll look at it again. Okay. Okay. And uh, my comment is uh, in terms of uh, safety and uh, preventing COVID transmission, I, I, in favor of the driver barriers or in the bus all day. But uh, from what I'm learning about the virus spread, it's primarily indoors and confined spaces. Uh, outdoors is much lower risk. And for uh, people in the same space for 15 minutes or more, 
uh, whatever can be done to maximize ventilation, uh, I think would be helpful, even uh, window opening if it's not too hot. So I just wanted to recommend that to the staff. Appreciate that. And that's on the list. Lance just signaled to me that's one of the things that the maintenance staff is, is working on now. How, how do you improve ventilation with the ventilation system and the windows? I think that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, Mark. Yes, so uh, next up we have uh, Karn and the CEO's report. Karn? Thanks, Mike. Actually, you've gotten bits of bits of my report already through the committee uh, through committee work, which is um, as I think back to our work with Doug Eady, that that is what this is designed to do. So that the committees are literally the worker bees that support you know the board and the board meetings. Uh, I'll, I'll try to fill in a couple of blanks and gaps here. Um, you know, we've said, said several times in the committee reports as the region reopens. Well, as the region reopens, so is CDPA. Um, as Chris pointed out, it's been a steady increase over the last six to eight weeks on the fixed route side and STAR. STAR's coming back at a, at a slower rate. And you can almost, and Ross talked about this in the planning committee, you can almost trace it to the different phases and what happens in each phase. Uh, as we're, we're in three, we're, we are scheduled to move to some portion of four next week, we think that's where uh, people will start to uh, return to the workforce, the workplace, excuse me, uh, and we expect ridership to go up. So our July 12th, uh, July 12th plan, which will start on July 12th, is really designed to, to, to accommodate and accept customers without uh, overcrowding the system. That, though, is going to be um, more art than science. Um, we'll have all, just about all of our trunk routes back, either at frequencies that they were at pre-COVID or better. I mean, you're going to have some routes with frequencies at certain times of the day with buses coming um, less than every 10 minutes, or more than, or, I don't know how that would be expressed, more than every 10 minutes, which is actually unheard of for a bus system of this size. We were pretty close to that anyway on some corridors, but we're going to exceed that in order to minimize uh, crowding. So, so film at 11 on that, we're gonna watch the system very, very carefully. But by the middle of July, just about all the trunk routes will be back to what they were pre-COVID. Lots of our neighborhood routes will look like they looked pre-COVID. Some won't, uh, because ridership really hasn't shown the need yet to add back service. And then there's a handful of routes that have been temporarily suspended while we work through this process. We're looking at another uh, series of improvements, enhancements uh, around Labor Day. That depends on what the colleges are doing, but we're starting to see signs of what the plan is. It looks like uh, we may have to actually move up some of our uh, enhancements because colleges look like they're gonna, a lot of them are gonna come back before Labor Day and have a shorter duration on the semester. But with a third of our ridership, involved some way with colleges, we're going to have to plan for that. And it's going to get difficult at that point to do, to keep at 15 or 20 with existing resources. But we're, we're looking at that now and looking as to how we can uh, best meet that. You all know about the enhanced maintenance, cleaning and disinfecting uh, processes. We, we have an organization plan that the board has seen that covers the various areas, and each of those areas is responsible for developing their own plan. <clears throat> the service plan you, you've been privy to through committee, you've seen bits and pieces of the maintenance plan, but that's being finalized and we'll sent to you shortly. And what that does is looks at how often buses are cleaned, buses are deep cleaned, and buses are, are disinfected. Um, that's what we're working on right now. Um, we basically turned the maintenance shop upside down. Uh, it used to be um, led by uh, technical uh, expertise. Technical expertise is still there, but really training, uh, cleaning and disinfecting have become sort of the issues of the day. 
uh, and, and we're doing our best to at least let our customers and our employees know that when they get out of board a bus, they can feel safe knowing that three or four touch points with safety, cleaning, and disinfecting have happened. Um, barriers, um, we've actually moved the dates up. Uh, it's not August, it's, it's starting in July. Um, we're expecting the first delivery of hardware within the next week or two, uh, and those will affix to the various fixed poles and, and stanchions on, on vehicles. And then when we get the plexiglass barriers, it literally will be slid in and locked. Uh, if, if all goes well, mid-July, we'll have the first shipment of, of, the, uh, of the barriers. That's all new to us. Um, it may sound easy and look simple, but anything of that magnitude will cause some disruption, will cause uh, us to have to probably reevaluate policies and procedures, uh, and to watch for safety issues. Um, it's very large, it's, you can see through it, but it's very large. It's a large unit, uh, so we're anticipating some issues and trying to sort of nip issues in the bud before they uh, develop. Um, CPHP cycle started Monday, lots of excitement. We've got about 100 bikes out. Uh, they're being used, we'll get you numbers quickly, and we'll gauge that receptivity to the next phase. Uh, we, we're looking at 75 to 100 uh, bikes at a time. Um, and we can always pull back if there's an issue. Lots of uh, cleaning and disinfecting going on every evening when buses, uh, 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 when, our, when our operations crew are out doing that. And each bike every day has a bottle of hand sanitizer uh, there for people uh, to use. So keep your fingers crossed, but so far so good. Uh, we had a lot of people call us and contact us about bikes. They wanted them. Uh, we moved cautiously. Uh, but we think, we think we're ready um, to let bike share return. Uh, aligned with CDPHP, our much anticipated wellness center uh, is actually just about done. Um, we took the old train room on the first floor. And there are now six rooms in there, a couple of examination rooms, a couple of testing rooms, waiting area, the uh, healthcare professional uh, has I believe been hired. Uh, if not hired, job offer has been made. Uh, and then there's their backup people. These are registered nurses. Uh, and they'll, they'll be here uh, to work with our, our, our workforce. We're, we're really excited about this. We think it, it's one of the next best steps that we can take to keep our workforce well. Uh, and then, you know, uh, either directly or indirectly, uh, impact our healthcare line item. Uh, that will be a long, a long time in coming. Uh, we need to change behavior. Um, and that's what this is really intended to do by moving um, the wellness center right here at CDPJ. We think we can have an impact on the well being of our employees. Um, we talked about the strategic plan. We're really excited about that. I'm excited about talking about it um, in, in more detail next, next week. Um, there's just been a lot of work by the board and the staff. And I think it's, it would be uh, ill-advised to delay it. And what you're going to hear is how the pillars have withstood uh, the COVID-19 uh, uh, crisis. Um, staff, uh, the management staff returns to the building, 50, at least 50% of them, uh, next Monday, this coming Monday, I should say. And then the remaining 50%, assuming all goes well, come back in two weeks. Uh, we had a um, Microsoft Teams meeting with all the staff people yesterday. Uh, they're anxious, they want to come back. Um, th they know that there are some issues. Uh, we've revamped how this building is clean, uh, completely turned it upside down. It's cleaned and disinfected right daily, uh, but how that's done is different than it was before. Uh, we're confident uh, that the human resource plan uh, will work. I mean, it includes everything with the temperature checks. If you want to come in the building, and this goes for board members as well, you're going to have your temperature check uh, when you come in the building. Uh, 
uh, there's going to be a health assessment form that employees who may have missed a temperature check will have to fill out. There will be uh, sanitizing stations throughout the building. Uh, there will be new signage. Uh, actually, that I think goes up tomorrow. Uh, signage that directs you and explains uh, what to do. So it will not be from a lack of effort that we might stumble. Uh, it will be that we just stumble, like like all companies will. Everybody's experiencing the same thing. But if we're really looking forward to having everyone back, um, I know that working remotely can work. It works. And it, it has worked for us. But the human interaction uh, is, I, I still think, you, you know, part of the work life balance and uh, we'll, we'll be okay uh, but I'm sure though I'm sure there will be hiccups along the way uh, cares grant I think we've covered that uh, we're drawing it regularly we're showing it uh, thanks to a lot of great board discussion and performance monitoring I think we're showing it the way it should be shown uh, on our financial uh, reports and the, the word of caution we've all used it but I don't think we can say it enough this is stopgap funding this is, was not meant to be a forever thing. It was meant to get you through a period of adjustment. And I think it's doing a great job. Uh, as designed, it is, it is filling in the gaps of customer fare, state operating assistance, grants. Actually, we thought mortgage tax would be going down, but it hasn't. Looks like everybody's out buying and refinancing, which is great. Uh, but I think stopgap funding is the best way to describe it. And um, we can only get so far when it's only that fund source. So I think it's important that we, uh, and we are looking uh, at a target date to begin collecting fares. It's tied to these new barriers and tied to the front door. But we need that revenue source. It's important to us. So uh, all in all, I, I'd say you know, things are going well. I think the attitude, the morale, the, the whatever you want to call it is, is good, if not even better than good. We're doing everything we can to know good performance and to, um, to, to congratulate people on accomplishments. Uh, but something as simple as the usual uh, recognitions at board meetings, we need to get back to that. We need to get back to talking about you know, the success of the company um, rather than you know, worrying about how to patch things together. We'll still have to patch things together, but there are a lot of good stories to be told. That concludes my report. Any questions? Be glad to glad to answer them, or at least get them to the right person. Okay. All right, Barb. I'm good. Yeah, oh, sounds good. Thanks, thanks for the update on everything, and as mentioned, the. A great job by everyone during unprecedented times, and you know it makes us uh, proud to be board members and represent um, CDTA. So uh, thank you for everyone there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I have one comment. Oh, Mark, I yeah. I didn't receive Carm's written report, which is usually a very good overview of everything that's going on. Is that sent and not reach me or what? I don't think I got it either. Yeah, you know, uh, that kind of goes to, it's sort of like the newspaper. It, or actually, I think some typos were found at about 10 o'clock. We'll, we'll shoot that out to you. We, the plan is always to get that right out to you. Sorry if we didn't get that done ahead of time. Thanks. All right. All right. Thank you so much. On my, uh, I'm, I'm Styling in Carm's audio is not very good. There's a lot of distortion, and it's hard to hear. I'm trying to think of the excuse there, but I don't have one. I guess I'm a little distorted. We'll try to fix that, Mark. A couple of things. Just ask my mother or my wife. Or my kids. Yeah. Try, no, don't ask my kids. Try, try, to, yeah, try to get a better mic by next month. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I had one comment that I, I wanted to make, or really just make sure that everybody on the board is aware of the APTA board seminar workshops that are coming up. Um, I, I, not everybody goes to the board uh, seminar, so I don't know if everybody gets the emails. Do you know, Dave? If the whole I do not get the emails. 
Okay, I'll make sure that I get it out to the full board. There's one on uh, board governance that uh, yours truly and Doug Eady are doing on July 6th. Mm -hmm. And I believe July 14th, there is one on safety that's being done as a webinar. Um, they will be interactive, so there'll be presentation, but lots of time for Q&A and, um, and, and, and more importantly, just sharing and networking. So I'll get that out. If you are registered as a transit board member committee member at APTA, you should be on the list, but I'll get it to the full board regardless. Good. Thank you. I just Thank didn't you. want people to miss out on it. Yeah, we'll follow up yeah. and make sure we're supporting okay. Sorry, Georgie. Go ahead. We'll make sure we're supporting that. If anybody wants to attend anything, if there's uh, any fees involved or anything of the sort, just let us know. We'll, we'll, we'll take care of that. Uh, they don't, they didn't seem to be charging fees. Are they charging? I don't think so, but just in case. I think, to, I think uh, it, they're looking at it as, as an opportunity in the future to do more of their delivery through a web content. Mm -hmm. And at some point they may charge, but right now they're not charging charging anything. You know, and one other note, Denise, just because you, you mentioned the APTA stuff, um, the expo, yeah. uh, which was scheduled to be in October in Anaheim, has now been moved to March of 2021. So. Uh, APTA is pushing out its conference calendar even further, um, you know, because of all the COVID stuff. So the Expo is their biggest event over a three-year period. Um, not so much because of the annual conference part of it that changes, because that's pretty similar. But, but the Expo, which, um, you know, is a product showcase, basically, that's, that is the biggest event that APTA puts on. So... Uh, it's early March. It's uh, the same dates as what would have been the Ledge Conference. So I think it's March 14 to 17. Um, again, if, uh, if, if folks are able to plan and can attend that, the Expo is, uh, is a worthwhile um, event to go to. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that information. Yeah. Um, we have uh, no executive session items. Our uh, upcoming meeting is board meeting. Next board meeting is August 26th, 12 p.m., either via Microsoft Teams or possibly in person, which would be great. Um, yes, it would. Yeah. <laughs> so we look forward to seeing everybody at some point here in person. Uh, I've seen Chris, obviously, with the laptop, so <laughs> that was helpful. But uh, no, I appreciate everyone's uh, attendance and participation, and um, there's no further questions. Uh, I seek a motion to adjourn our meeting. Thank you. Thanks, please. Second. All right. Thanks, Dave. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much Bye. again. Thanks, everybody. Hey, thank you. See you Thanks. next time. Good to see you.